Now we turn our attention to the founders. Yesterday we finished with the questions to the writings themselves. Now, seven questions to the founders. Number one, what is the highest claim you make for yourself? In Hinduism, there is no one founder. I just put a name there. He's one of the authors, Viswamitra. There are many other authors. The highest claim they made for themselves is that of a sage. A sage is a person in the community who is very high up there, revered, uh, known to be of very high level of knowledge, who is um, good at counseling, holds himself well in society, and known to be of very deep piety. That is a sage. Buddhism, Gautama Buddha claimed to be the super enlightened one. After six years of searching from the age of 29 to 35, one night at Bodh Gaya, he claimed to have been super enlightened, going through four stages. And then when he came out of the four stages, he said he knew what ultimate truth was because he was enlightened. Islam, Muhammad, claimed to be the seal of the prophets. The tradition of uh, Islam is that their God, Allah, sent down 124,000 prophets, beginning with Adam, and on down the line. But the seal, meaning the final one who had put the stamp of final truth on the revelation was Muhammad. He was the seal of the prophets. Judaism, Moses was a prophet and a lawgiver. When he came to this man, Jesus, he said he was a son of God. Right here we must stop and ask ourselves what kind of attitude are we bringing to the search. Remember we said that all of us had three attitudes, that of a skeptic, that of a believer, that of an inquirer. The first inclination when you look at all these five is to say that the line is drawn here for the simple reason that a sage and an enlightened one, a prophet and a lawgiver are all human. This is a superhuman claim. So immediately I stepped back and I said, Woo, what is he claiming to be? He's dressed just like me, eats food just like me, goes to work, struggles every day at his carpenter shop. What gives him the right to call himself the son of God or God? So the first inclination is complete disbelief. But that wouldn't be fair. That would be becoming a skeptic. Or the other way is saying, well, the people say that he is, so I'll also say he is God. That would be a believer. No, we must be a, an inquirer. And if you are an inquirer, you must scrutinize that. Clearly, that was the highest claim anybody made. All the others were in the realm of our own living. That is in the realm of the supernatural. He claimed to be the son of God. How would you go about trying to see whether that claim will match anything? One possible way is to accept that he was a human, making a big claim. So the question is, what kind of humans who are ordinary make those big claims? What kind of a person or a being could ever call himself God? Mad? Deluded? An incorrigible pathological liar? A megalomaniac? Egomaniac? Or truly God? Did he fit into any of those? How about mad, deluded? What did some great thinkers say about him? And usually we talk about philosophers and those who have you know, waxed eloquent about what they think. But I am going to point out to a quotation by a world emperor. His name is Napoleon Bonaparte. At the end of his days, the people asked him to just consider a peasant whose name was Jesus. And he said, why should I consider a peasant gone thousands of years ago? They said, no, just consider him. Just think about him. And in his days of exile, he did consider and went through his life and his claims. And this is what he said. Everything in Christ astonishes me. The nearer I approach, the more carefully I examine. Everything is above me. Everything remains grand, of a grandeur which overpowers neither history, nor humanity, nor the ages, nor nature. Offer me anything with which I am able to compare it or explain it. Here, everything is extraordinary. 
Bernard Ram said these words about the words of Jesus. They are read more, quoted more, loved more, believed more, translated more because they're the greatest words ever spoken. And where is their greatness? Their greatness lies the pure, lucid spirituality in dealing clearly, definitively, and authoritatively with the greatest problems that throb in the human breast. You don't have to agree to that. All will have to say that all scholars, serious scholars, who have looked into the teachings and the words of Jesus, not a single one of them has ever called him deluded or mad. Was he a liar, an imposter? Not likely. Because of what happened at the Sanhedrin trial. The Sanhedrin were the religious leaders of the day in the Jewish nation. They were also the judges. And it was judgment time when they had called Jesus to be a defendant. And they asked him this very specific question that we are asking today. I was asking now in my age. Tell me, are you the son of God? You made a big claim. Now tell me if you are the son of God. Really, truly. Jesus was a thoroughbred Jew. He knew that this Sanhedrin had the power to pass judgment on him. Because they were judges. He knew if he ever said he was the son of God, he would go straight to his death. Now, anybody in their right mind, clearly thinking, they would bring truthful evidence to escape the death sentence. A defendant. Defendants throughout history are also known to pull some amount of falsehood into the picture to escape the death sentence. Nobody in his right mind has ever been known to cling to falsehood to bring on the death sentence. Imagine going home to your spouse and your children and telling them, you and I know I didn't murder the guy. They're accusing me of that murder. But I didn't do it. But you know what? I'll just go and tell the judge I did it. And after I, I will cling to that and I will, I will say I just did it until they take me to the gallows and hang me. How does that sound? It does not sound reasonable at all. Nobody in his right mind will cling to a lie to bring on the death sentence. Jesus at that point answered in affirmation. He said, I am knowing fully well that he would go to his death. Therefore, an inquirer like me, looking at that, will say, that cannot be a lie. He fully believed he was the Son of God. And when you say something that you fully believe, you are not called a liar. Megalomaniac? Yes, the Caesars of Rome and the Pharaohs of Egypt called themselves God. Because they wanted people to worship them, not just treat them like the leaders of the nation. Worship as God. And if you don't, we might even punish you and even put you to death. That's how they were. And you come down and wipe their shoes and stay down there. That's an egomaniac. Was he? Well, in the East where I come from, we do still have this, uh, the way of um, greeting people who have walked a long distance from the previous village to this where you are. And as soon as they land at your home, the first thing you do is pour out a bucket or a, or a bowl of water and wash their feet. It has so many meanings and it's very refreshing. I've had it done so that I know. But the person who does it is the lowest in the social ladder. It is the servants who do that. One day this man went with his disciples to a certain person's house and alas there was no servant to wash the feet. And the disciples knowing that that's the custom, knowing that it's the lowest person who washes feet, looked at each other and said, who's going to wash our feet? This man rose up, took off his outer garment, wrapped his waist in a towel, and washed the dirty feet of his disciples like any common servant. This is not a picture of an egomaniac. And then he turned to the disciples and said, look, I have done it. You also do it to each other. This is not a picture of a person who drunk with power. 
I could not call him a megalomaniac. So truly God, but it's, it struggles. How can I easily say he is God? And yet, this claim is written in the best attested ancient piece of literature. It is not mythological. So here we are. Can't throw it out, can't accept it fully. Difficult. And so let's remain an inquirer and keep on inquiring. Today, tomorrow, anytime. But, rem but re remember, he does not fit into those kind of people who call themselves God as human beings. Somehow there seems to be something different. Some people say, let's give him as much as we can afford to give him. Let's call him a great moral teacher, a prophet. C.S. Lewis was a professor of literature in Cambridge University. He was an atheist and he examined that very thing. And this is what he said. I am here trying here to prevent anyone saying the really foolish thing that people often say about him, which is, I am ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That is the one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of thing Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on a level with a man who says he's a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice, either this man was and is the son of God or else a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool, you can spit at him, kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come up with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. He made a claim. There's no question about it. That that was his claim. Some people say, for instance, uh, Richard Dawkins, because I think somebody was telling me the other day they had read his book, The God Delusion, in which he says, well, he was honestly mistaken. Honestly mistaken about that claim. Now, really, if you're an inquirer, let's look at that word, honestly mistaken. You can be honestly mistaken about where you left your keys, <laughs> or a face in the crowd do any of are any of you ladies ever honestly mistaken about whether you are the queen of england or have any of you guys you're honestly mistaken about where your next meal will be whether it's in mars or venus no you can be mistaken about a cr face in the crowd you cannot be honestly mistaken about being God. That's a ridiculous proposition. It's such an intellect, clear as the sky, bracing as the mountain air, sharp and penetrating as a sword, thoroughly healthy and vigorous, always ready, always self-possessed, liable to a radical and most serious delusion concerning his own character and mission, preposterous imagination. So we can't, we can't accuse him of not knowing what he was talking about when he said he was the son of God. He used two phrases, son of man, son of God. Both are supernatural uh, titles.